Hello guys, I'm Super Ron. Welcome back to the channel. We're back at Auto Shack and we're back on the Caddy show car build. You guys seem to be really enjoying this and you saw in the last episode, we got the Audi TT 1.8 20 valve turbo engine dropped in the bay and it is sitting in there on its own on its mount. So what that allows us to do this week is because we're putting on air ride suspension, this thing is going to be incredibly low and as we saw, the drive shafts are going to hit the chassis legs. So we're gonna start off with a chassis notch, giving all the clearance we need. And although the engine is in the bay, we've got to start working out how it's gonna work in a Mark I. All the pipes are in the wrong place. There's still extra things in here that we don't need. We're gonna be getting rid of the battery tray. We've got other brackets around the engine bay that we're gonna be taking out because this is gonna be completely smooth and everything is gonna be hidden. So I need to think of a way to get my wiring looms down the outside as well. So I think we've got plenty to crack on with today and I know you have been anticipating this episode. So no intro, let's crack on and see what we can do with these chassis notches. So you can see already with just this being lowered, the drive shaft there has been hitting on the chassis leg because when the car's lowered, obviously the wheel goes up and the drive shaft goes up, but the engine stays where it is. So the angle of the drive shaft goes up and up and up. So when it's lowered, the drive shaft is more at this angle. So that's why this has been touching here over bumps that will bottom out. Now, because we're going on air ride, when it's static, this hub is gonna be right up here and the wheel is gonna be right up in the arch when it's parked, which a problem with this is obviously it's gonna hit there. So what we do is put a notch in it so kind of where that circle is there, we just make a bigger one up and then plate it in. Sometimes we move this over. On the passenger side with the short shaft, it's not quite so bad because you've got the point here is pretty much under where the chassis leg is. So although this end is moving all the way up here, this end is only moving a little bit. So we might only have to put a little notch in here. But the way I test it is to take out the springs, leave the shocks in, and then jack the whole leg all the way up because then we know that's going to be all the travel because effectively when the airbags let all the way down that's just the same as removing the springs and that'll give me all my dimensions so i know how tall this will go up so if i drop the struts off and take the springs out i can then real weld it and find out exactly where this is so let's strip down these legs and see how low we can get just need that so there are the springs out and we're left with just a bare shock in there so now i can push it up and down it'll keep the exact same projection as it would if it was being used so let's see how high we can get it so we are butted up but we are at pretty much the end of our shock travel. Now the air struts might be a little bit shorter shock. To see how far this has actually gone up, we might only need a little notch. But if you look at the angle of the bottom arm, we are pretty well up there. This ideally is straight down here. This is it with a wheel on, and that's with the shock all the way bottomed out, so it's not really all that low i think he must have been running pretty much the shock was bopped out all the time when it's just on the coilovers we've got a bit of room up in there but we are just rubbing but i think with the air struts that is going to go a lot lot higher so we know where our notch has got to go just a little bit of trimming required and on this side with the bottom arm up at an extortionate angle we are still all clear on the chassis notch so we might go up a little bit more so i can just pretty much take the lip off that and a little bit of sculpting the track rod ends don't touch so that's all right we might flip the ends to put them at a better angle so we just mark each side of the drive shaft where we want to cut drop that back down so i just drop the strut back out to give us a little bit more room and i took off the brakes as well because we're not going to be needing them. Just give me a little bit more access to where I'm working. So now I can give that a little junk, junk, cut out. And you can see that'll go straight through there. So 
And there we've got our passageway through. So when we lift this oh, up, oh, now it sits in there and it has got clearance all the way around. So now we've just got to box this in because obviously this is the main chassis leg. And for that what we use, nice bit of tube. So I'll just trim that up. That'll fit in there like that. And I can just weld all the way around. Let's cut a little bit off and oh, fits in there perfect. So I'll just trim that down in line with the bottom and we'll have a nice sealed chassis leg again. It's nice in there. We just draw around it. That's the shape we need. And here's that bit of pipe cut out and the other half of our jigsaw piece is what is going to go in the hole. So that sits in there like that. All cut really nice and tight. I've left it a bit, little bit long around the edges so when we trim it back I can weld it on and then trim it exactly the shape of the chassis leg. So it will look like a seamless join. That will sit in there really nice. So we're ready to tack in. I've just cleaned it all up around the edge. We are ready to weld. So one last check. It's a bit hard to tell when it's up in the air. But that is super low. And if you go down to sump level, you can see the sump is actually going to be on the floor. So this is as low as it can go anyway. So we're all nice and clear up in there. Drive shaft clears. Let's get welding on. So there you can see the sump is actually lower than the tire. So it's never going to get this low. But they are some funky arm angles. So I'll call that safe to go. So it just tacked it in. And even at this extraordinary angle, drive shaft can still spin and it's not even touching. We have got a nice gap all the way around. So I can drop this back down. It's hard quite to gauge what angle we're actually at at the minute. You can see the track rod ends are pointing straight up. Let's see if we can see how much it drops when I let it down. Yeah. Let's get welded. And there it is, all welded in. That's definitely not going anywhere. And now we have got our view all the way through to the CV joint. That can go right up and down. I got halfway around the other side, but we'll wait till the engine's out to finish that off. That will do perfect. And on to the passenger side. A little notch here too. And all scalloped up, ready for the pipe. And chopped. Nice. And all welded up. I had a bit better access this side, so I went all the way round. And I just did the seams as well, because we're at a spot welded. Just did a seam weld along them. Happy with that. Right, so we're a little bit more naked. Took the bumper and the wings off. Because I'm going to run the wiring looms along here for the headlights. I'm going to weld some little tabs or weld little bolts on here, so I've got something to secure to and then you won't see any bolt through from the other side. We'll come through there, up, along, and then poke out just where the headlights are. So that way, you won't see any of it. We might run the bonnet cable that side as well, so that'll be hidden under the wing. So I'll just weld some little studs onto there, like so. So it's a nice studs all the way along, really solid. They're not going anywhere. And this side as well. So we've got some nice points all the way along there where we can P-clip it on and then run the loom up above it. It's well out of the way of the wheel. That can't go any higher than that. So this is the original side repeater loom that comes to the side repeater there. So you can see they run that on little clips just under there. So we're gonna be well up out the way of that and all this will be going in the bin and while the weld was out just buzz that mount back together as well for the rear so that's back ready to go i think next up i'm going to drill out this battery tray because we're not keeping that we're relocating the battery and that will really make this side look really cool and smooth 
So these are spot welded all along the edge and along that wing on the inner wing. You can kind of see spot welds, they're like these little dimples there and it's where they get the two panels together, they have a big electric charge and it goes and welds them together with electric. So if we drill out the top layer, that will just pop off and can get rid of the washer jet one as well because we're going to hide that elsewhere. You can just kind of see the spot welds on there. So I'll just drill them out and then these panels will come off. And it's out, that looks much better. So now it mirrors the other side being an open chassis leg. So both ends will look the same. And here it is cut out. So you can see I drilled the spot welds. I had to cut along here because you can't get the drill in. But they all came out nicely. They came out really tidy. So I can just nip the ends off. Didn't distort the panel. Sometimes you can either drill all the way through or when you're like chiseling in, that can make a right mess of it. But these have come out nice. So I'll just tickle the tops off them and the bracket up there as well. So you can see how ununiform all the spot welds are. They just kind of buzz them on where they can. So this one went on there, drilled the spot welds out and off it comes. And we use a special spot weld drill, which has got a flat end on it. See there, it's got a tiny little point at the end to center it. And that allows us just to drill through the first panel and not through the second panel. And then with Mr. Mig, just put a little blob on each of those holes and they'll ground down into nothing then to save lots of filler. And all metal finished, just like there was nothing ever there. These are all smoothed off as well, just a little prime and they'll be covered up. So that's this corner all ready and prepped. When the engine's out, we probably will weld up those bigger holes just to make a complete flush bay. There's some odd holes where they used to be clips, which will probably weld up, but we'll wait till the engine's back out for that. I just wanted to get this corner clear so I knew what I was working with. Right, so next up, I wanna look at pipe work because we've got our Mark I header tank over here, but the Audi TT header tank sits here, goes into the bottom of here. And then the top water pipe comes here which goes into the top of the tank. So they're the two fittings we have got on our tank. There and there, which will be that one and that one. But we're on the wrong side. You might have noticed on that other caddy, he's actually put his header tank this side. So he's put the bracket and got the header tank this side, which will work, but I think we're probably gonna keep it over that side. And then this side will be completely clear. So it's got its Mark One bracket, on there and that just clips in and then all of this side will be nicely tidied up because all of this will be going this is all for the evap system so that will be going that will be going all that will be going if we can get the header tank and everything over the other side as well and we should be able to modify this is the water feed to the turbo comes up and joins into that and get that over the other side all that will come here is just a couple of fuel lines down and this side will be completely empty so let's have a look where these go to so it covers off, and this top water pipe here that goes to the top of the header tank is a metal pipe, and it runs along there. Comes out this end and goes into this hose here. So this is the other end. So this needs to go there. So that'll be nice and easy just to connect that straight up. And then the lower one, this actually is, you can see it, just behind the dipstick there which is broken. So that's this pipe here. So all we need is to either run this one over, but that one goes into the metal bar right at the bottom there, which is also connected to the oil cooler pipe here. So we can just tee into this and that'll go up to a point there. And then heater matrix pipes, we've still got the Audi TT ones here and the Mark 1 one is here, and on the Mark 1 they have a manual valve in line, so we have to keep this, but with a bit of chopping, we'll be able to get both of these to work. Then, put them out of the way. This one is the brake reservoir servo. This is for the servo assist of the brake vacuum, 
and that needs to go just there so we should be able to use this pipe and connect it straight in another little pipe that was meant to be something else i've got to mod this side is the cam belt covers because now we've got that engine mount sticking out and an engine mount in the chassis leg so where these go on hits the chassis leg so you need to take just a little notch out of this one you have to cut quite a lot out of this one because that's where the mount actually is so you kind of cut across there so i'll do that next and then we'll know there i'm going to clear all the mounts in the bay so that's that section chopped off you can just chop that tab off sometimes easier but it's it's good to have three points so now if we line that up where it should be like that we know we've got to come straight across there bolt this on make a cut and that'll fit in there treat and there it is all trimmed nicely around the engine mount so that fits in there nice and snug but still with enough clearance for any movement it looks much better it's all protected the only thing we can't do anything about is that hole is where the original tt mount went in but once the tension is on and the belt's on that's pretty well covered up as well so we'll get that on next and we can just double check our belt clearance we always recommend putting covers on because it only takes one little stone to flick up in there and ruin your day so that fits in there good just put the bottom pulley back on so i could mock up the belt obviously this one's way too long because we've taken out the power steering and the aircon but i can get a good line of sight up there and as you can see we've got loads of room so that's not really a problem we'll just have a measure up for the belt you can get these ribbed belts in all different sizes so there's a perfect one and we've still got the tensioner as well the other thing while it's up here with the pulley in i thought i'd try in this boost pipe the one we've got coming down the back to see if this would work or not and it's going to be tight getting it through here with where the drive shaft is all up here can actually come off because that's just a lip below the chassis leg the chassis legs actually right up there so i've got fingers width up there so we can cut it all the way along that line to give us more room and what the tt actually has is they call it a pancake boost pipe which isn't circle like this it's actually flat and it runs along here because the other trouble we've got if we put the car on lock is we haven't got a lot of room when the wheel's there but the pancake one if it could come along here and they kind of go under here and then i think they do go down but we might be able to modify that to go up and up to the intercooler we might be able to make this work if we give it another little trim out there just need to make sure this clears the drive shaft when it's at its full height um, but i think we'll get one of these pancake pipes and see if we can make it work this way that is what the mock-up is all about and there's the heater matrix pipes done at the back so we've still got a little valve in that controls it from the heat controls so i just shortened the mark one pipes there and there and these are the 20 valve pipes that go on i might just need to put a reducer in this one because as you can see these are quite a bit bigger than the mark ones the bottom one lines up nicely so that's got a bigger joiner in just that one there that's the original tt ones that just carry on into the loom so that's a nice easy one and our cable just goes back on top there and the other end of this is your hot and cold here so when that's on hot that just opens that valve and lets water into the matrix nice and simple and does the job let's have a look at this vacuum for the brake servo with the intake pipe carefully positioned back you can see this is where we need to get to this is our secondary air injection solenoid so that'll all be going this vacuum will be going and just a plate will be going on there so we'll have more room at the back but we need to get this pipe to there and that is nearly long enough just to cut off and join but because this is a turbo we need the one-way valve in it otherwise when it comes on boost fills up the inlet that's going to go into our servo which is not what we want and the other thing because this is vacuum these are all hard lines because if you have it all in rubber they can squish under vacuum so that's why you want the majority of it hard line just with some rubber joiners 
I think just with a chop, a chop, a chop. Put this end in there, this end with a joiner to there, so that's straight, that should work. They chopped, and then just split it, and then you could get it off the barbed fitting. So what I think I can do, if we get that to go in there, and then if I can heat this up and get this to go over the barb, that'll do the job nicely. We can maybe warm it up and straighten this one a little bit. That'll go on there. So let's try and warm this pipe up and get it over this barb. Be another tick. Making sure it's the right way around. So we want it to suck that way. Oh, that couldn't have gone more perfect if I tried. That sits in there really nice. Under the cover, that goes in there like a factory join. So we just got the joiner from the Mark 1, then that melted in, so that's all one piece, as per factory. And with the covers on, like so, that swoops around there. I also found the other cover for the front, which sits under here. We need the bracket. And that's all the bracket that held all the evap solenoids so we can we've still got the bolt points there and there so i can get rid of all the solenoids just use the bracket and that also holds the dipstick and then that'll go there as well looking very factory so let's strip that bracket down and that bracket should be my pile of bits to keep So this is the bracket, but we don't need any of that on it. So we can get rid of all the solenoids, all the pipes. So all we need is the two bolt holes for the manifold and then the two clip holes for that cover. So I'll just put all this junk in the bin, junk removed and on. And all fixed on properly. So it's purely cosmetic, but it's just little things like that that make builds for me when they've got the factory features from the donor so now we've got our plastic covers all on here. Plastic cover on the top and plastic cover on the front. And I think this is gonna be a super tidy build. Now we've got this side all cleaned up as well. Just gonna have the water pipe going down that side. And we are gonna have the airflow meter and air filter here. So in this area it's gonna be a big cone filter is gonna be here, kind of covering that up as well. This is gonna look epic. The other thing I wanna try and find a home for is the horns. As factory, they bolt onto the bumper mounts. So they bolt on there and then the bumper bolts go through as well. Obviously we don't want them there because you're gonna see that both sides. We wanna hide it. On the Scirocco, we had a lot more room at the front so I was able to hide them underneath. But on a Mark I, we don't have that extra room. I don't wanna put them down there because obviously you can see that and I want all that to stay super hidden. So there's not a lot of room underneath, but what I think I might do is use this spare room we've got up here. So if I can change the bracket, maybe get them up here somewhere. So with the original bracket, that didn't really fit in there very well, but with a big chunk of angle iron, made up a little bracket to go on the bottom there, like that, I think. weld that bracket on in there they'll be tucked right up out the way I'll still have them facing forwards and when it's from the top you obviously won't be able to see them we could even put a little splash guard up there just to guard them a bit but they both fit in there nicely loads of room to the wing it's not going to get in the way of our wiring I think that is a good job so I'll, I'll weld that on because of course we want to get all this done before we paint the bay and that'll be another problem solved hidden in the wing there think about there that's on Double check. Perfect. 
and you can't see it from the outside. And on, it's not going anywhere. As always, it's all in the prep. So I think that is gonna wrap up this episode. I've been really happy with progress. It's been nice to do some custom stuff, a bit of fabrication. This side of the engine bay is gonna look epic. Now it's completely open. You can see right down to the floor and even the little things like the horde, you probably wouldn't have seen unless you looked right in there. That just wasn't good enough. So getting that mounted so I know where to wire it to as well is another one of those little ticks that is done. So once again, thank you everyone for watching these episodes. The Caddy build has really taken off and finally it's starting to feel worthwhile doing these videos. It's a lot of work completing all these videos, all the editing that goes into it, but with all the comments that have been flooding in, it's made it absolutely worth it. So we're starting to get a few episodes now, so I have put them all in a playlist. So if you're only finding this video today, I think we are on to episode three now. I've still got lots and lots of work, but the mock-up is coming together. It's really important to do it in this stage, get everything in the bay, because the last thing you want is to get it all freshly painted, then realize you need a bracket or you need to move something that is not a good conversation to have. So we've just got notifications. We are having a delivery tomorrow of the air ride system, which is gonna be a massive job on the back. Because these caddies are on leaf springs, we've got to completely strip down the rear and start again with a five link setup, which I'm really excited because this is the first one I've done. So be sure to give this video a like, be sure to tune in next week because we have got air ride progress inbound. But until next time, make sure you have fun.